Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I wish to spend some time with you today to explore what are the current trends in technology which are being used for healthcare and what are its implications for sustainable wellness. That's the conference title. Yeah? So that's what I'm going to use. And at the end I would like to draw some inferences and implications for what does it mean for divine noni and the noni entrepreneurs here because this is the transition from uh, all the great research which has been done on noni and related medicinal plants so this session is where we stand on the shoulder of giants who have preceded us and so we have the advantage of all of them and we would see what we can do to provide channels for medicinal plants and products like no need to the ultimate consumer, the customer. That's what we want to do. Is that all right with all of you? So I, I want to look at what Hippocrates, the father of medicine, talked about. He said that let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And all the sessions which we heard were highlighting that hey, we need to go back to the food as medicine. Are we there or we have gone beyond that? Currently we feel that we are more taking care of sickness rather than managing the wellness and the health care. And that's, that's the paradox of the development which we have gone through since the time immemorial. Yeah? We have become very reactive. We wait for a disease to strike us. For example, we would only go to the doctor or to the health practitioner if we have experienced the stroke, the heart attack or the cancer has been detected. You know? Whereas what is required is a proactive, continuous measure of detection. What is also important is to recognize that all our diagnostics are very intermittent and episodic. And we go to diagnostic centers only when we get affected with the disease. Yeah? But these are all going to change. And all of us have experiences of waiting for more than an hour to have a five minute consultation with the doctor. It's extremely becoming costly, both in terms of opportunity cost of our time, as well as the money which we spend. India is the only country where out of pocket expenses which everybody entails is more than 85%. Yeah? And what about all the medicine? They are in a siloed kind of a stance and we are still organized with old definition and divisions and we are pretty slow in adopting new innovations and technologies which are happening. We are inefficient users of information. We have fragmented care, whereas what we need is an integrated care of our soul, body and hand and heart. What we see is a duplication of defensive medicine and waste of effort. And, and what we are also recognizing is, uh, at least from the sector which I come, healthcare is the last man standing in terms of adopting the digital technology. So, so the rate of adoption in healthcare is pretty low. What's happening? But we are seeing that worldwide there is a digital medicine which is gaining currency. We are seeing new interventions from 3D printing where we can uh, almost print any part of the tissue or any part of the organ for, for putting back into the body. We are looking at nanomedicines, we are looking at genomics, neuroscience and the way neuropathological conditions could be treated and whether we like it or not, all of us are living in a connected world. I'm sure all of you are using <coughs> smartphone. Yes? Do you know you carry about 60 senses with you any point of time? And so, so we are living in a connected world. So how do we use all these technologies in terms of sustainable wellness? So that's, that's the entire stuff which we want to do. And I want to start 
is with a quote from Steven Pinker. Steven Pinker is the greatest optimistic available in the world today. And he has written and released one of the latest books which is Enlightenment Now. And he says that there are spectacular progress being made in almost all the field. Unfortunately, we are not aware of it. So let's look at some of the progress which India has made. Life expectancy at birth. When we gained our independence, it was 32 years. Today, it is around about 68 years. And by 2050, we should be getting to around about 75, 8 years. Though we are still lagging behind many other countries, but there is a tremendous progress. Let's look at infant mortality rate. When we gained independence, we were having around about 190 uh, deaths per thousand birth. And currently, we are around about 46, 48. So tremendous progress there too. Under five mortality. When we gained independence, we were around about 290. Today, we are about 48. Maternal mortality rate. Again, significant progress has been made, which we need to acknowledge. But what we also need to understand is that India has successfully made an epidemiological transition and we are one of the country where both mortality because of communicative diseases as well as non-communication diseases coexist. But, but it was 2003 when India as a whole has transitioned from deaths because of communicative diseases, communication diseases to non-communication diseases. And what we have been hearing today and yesterday from different sessions is how medicinal plants could be used to control the entire non-communication diseases. Yeah? And if you look at epidemiological transition, that is the ratio between the mortality due to communication, communicable maternal, neonatal and nutritional diseases to the non-communication disease, we find that India could be differentiated into four regions. Low, where the transition ratio should be between 0.56 to 0.76, and, and most of the eastern states are there. Uh, low middle is northeastern states and Uttarakhand. Higher middle is where major chunk of uh, Midwest and mid central states are there. And high transition rate, which is Less than 0.31 is where Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, go and Kerala is there. And if you look at the two maps which we are showing, 1996, if you see, only Kerala had gone through the epidemiological transition. Come 2010, the entire country, all states, all regions, uh, we are seeing that the mortality because of non communication disease is greater than the communication disease. And, and the recent study shows, this is all I have taken from Lancet's the latest publication in December 2017, that India as a whole has transitioned in 2010. Various states and regions are going through a period between 1994 and 2010. So that means over a time of 20 years, we have experienced that the, the, the sedentary lifestyle is taking a toll on, on all non-communication diseases. And these are the far age risk behavior which controls almost 15 chronic conditions. And as you know, India is the capital hub for diabetes, hypertension, uh, chronic kidney failure, and, and, and a series of those diseases which I believe that we can take control. And that's where we need to keep our perspective and figure out how do we solve these problems? And let's look at what's our digital penetration in India. Uh, we have about 33% urbanization, 35% internet penetration, and about 79% mobile penetration. So can we use these technologies to, to, to reach out to our target segment of those who are high risk to non-communication diseases and, and how do we provide them the right kind of a care. What's also important is to recognize that in 2018, it's not the millennial who had the entire internet usage. We are seeing that people like us, who are in the <coughs> 60s and above or 55 and above, we are on the internet. Uh, most rural folks in India are on the internet. Uh, the general balance in terms of internet 
usage is improving. 70 to 80 percent of the users in rural areas are using mobile. What other is the going concern? So how do we use this as a channel to reach out to the market which we need to reach out? That's what we want to do. And we need to also recognize that we are in the dawn of patient-centric medicine, patient-centric wellness, patient-centric uh, entire approach to communications. And, and that's, that's where we are moving towards. What we are also seeing is a huge series of technological disruptions. Disruptions which you are aware of. We are all turned ourselves into professional photographers thanks to the digital camera. And, and so we are moving from the Kodak which used to be there when we were kids to where we are today, where Instagram is what we are using. So what it's showing is that the technology which are growing are growing exponentially and it is miniaturizing the entire technology and products and apps. And that's where we see that Apple is no longer looking at the Mac, but they are looking at the notebook and they are looking at the entire iPad and iTunes and those kind of stuff. What it also means is that technology, digital technology is helping us to reimagine the world. Uh, and, and if you see that earlier we were using the black box camera, today we are using the cam the mobile based camera and putting everything on Instagram, everything on Facebook and wherever we have. Yeah. Earlier we used to go and I do remember when I was doing my PhD dissertation I would go and spend time in the library. But today you can do everything on the Google in the tablets, you know. So that's the kind of a reimagining which is happening. All of you are using Ola. As soon as Sherman landed here, he said that, John, let's use Ola to go anywhere. So we are no longer going and standing and getting the taxi. So can we use digital technology for wellness? That's the question. We are also reimagining personal genomics. Genome research has gone and it has given quite a lot of breakthrough. Today, at $10, you can get the entire genomes of your map now. And, and Many celebrities are doing that and then they are taking out their organs which are all high risk products. You know? So we are getting that kind of a stuff. So how do we leverage cross disciplinary exponentially growing technologies which are low cost, which are educational bioinformatics, high resolution imaging, artificial intelligence, internet connectivity, mobile and, and social networking. So, so the challenge today for all of us is to see how do we use this and, and, and provide marketing channels for all of us in terms of high reach. What we are also seeing is that discrete sets of technological advances which are happening, they are all converging. Converging which can be used for food research, which can be used for agricultural research, which can be used for health service and wellness kind of stuff. And, and what we need to recognize is a new information layer is available to all of us. Are we using it in terms of uh, packaging the information, reaching out to the customer, and that's the challenge for us. Health kind of a care also are moving away, and what we recognize is that 80% of the costs are being borne by 20% of the population, which about so it's a 2018 kind of a formula which is working even in healthcare expense. And the trends which we are seeing is increasingly we will move out of intensive care to health independent living in, in home and those kind of stuff. Whether we like it or not, there is a paradigm shift. We are all going digital. Biomedicine plus information technology plus wireless plus mobile health. And, and what are we going to do to use all these facilities to, to, to look at the entire health and wellness concept? Data explosion is another area. All of you would have heard of big data and analytics and predictive analytics. IBM has come out with IBM Watson which can be used for a series of stuff and you can see that increasingly because of miniaturization of the products, now we can carry along with your mobile ECD mapping product or you can carry a 
medical record which could uh, be with you all the time. You don't have to put it in a centralized server farm. Affordable tablet. Thanks to Geo, they are trying to provide a tablet to each and every person at around about 3,000. So how are we going to use all these things? So what we need to recognize is there is an exponential technological explosion which is getting faster, it is getting smaller, cheaper and smarter. And, and that's, that's where we need to look at what we do use of these things. Yeah. I'm told that the explosion, data explosion is too fast, time available is too short, so I need to wrap it up. So what I'm going to suggest is that for all Noni entrepreneurs, we need to look at new channels. The current channels which you are using are becoming, which you need to disrupt yourself. You can start using the latest technology, the communication channels to reach out to a larger set of population and you can scale it much faster. And if some of you Noni entrepreneurs are interested in discussing how it could be used, I will be available after the entire presentation. Thank you very much.